This is Metastrophic Music. Hello friends, this is Matt, also known as Duffy, co-host to the podcast Metastrophic Music. I have been a fan of music pretty much since the time of my birth. At the age of two, I got into my dad's record collection and managed to get Journey to play all by myself. By the time I was in elementary school, I was already perfecting my Michael Jackson dance moves, which I still use to this day. Music always managed to capture my attention, and it seemed to be larger than life and to possess a power like nothing I had ever known before. As I approached my preteen years, rock and roll definitely seemed to be solidifying itself as one of the most important pieces of my identity, and even as one of the most valuable things in this life here on planet Earth. It was not enough to just listen to these bands and these rock stars, I had to become a part of it. I wanted that. I wanted to unleash the power of a guitar turned up to deafening volumes. I wanted to make people jump up and down and to be the conductor of that shared energy. So at 13, I got my first electric guitar and for the next 25 years, I played in bands. When you get rock music in your soul, it is there forevermore. When you truly have that passion, it never goes away. I am so happy and excited to now have this podcast, Matastrophic Music, to share my passion and love for music with my good friend Kelly, and to hopefully get to be the conductor again for that electricity that is formed from that passion. Whether or not anyone bothers to listen to this show, or if nobody even likes it, I am still gaining so much from this experience, and it truly has enriched my life. But... I'm sure that the listeners will be able to take away some good vibes from this. Hopefully we put a smile on your face and we get you checking out some new music that will open your mind and expand your musical knowledge. Music holds great power. It's medicinal. So join us at the campfire and let's just have some fun. Howdy campers! It's Kelly here co-host of the podcast, Matastrophic Music. I have been in awe of the magic of music ever since I received my very first cassette tape, the Back to the Future soundtrack in 1985. I am from, well, many places, having lived in 40 different residences in my 42 years on this planet, with 10 of those moves before I even graduated high school. If I had to choose a hometown, however, it would be Amherst, New York, a small suburb outside of Buffalo. That was the place that gave me the most positive influence on my life and some of the happiest childhood memories. It is also the location that I discovered that I wanted to be a storyteller. I am a published horror author who owns a small publishing label called Disaster Peace Press. And I owe much of this love for creating scary stories, the kind that go perfectly well with a campfire, to my late grandmother, Carol Kelly, who encouraged me to read Stephen King's Carrie, Firestarter, and The Stand at way too early, or perhaps just the right age. Some of this wonder of story crafting also arose from the imaginative world of the late Jim Henson, who I consider to be a great influence on the type of creator I strive to be. I am a mostly retired long-distance runner who, once upon a time ago, ran at least two and a half miles for 4,000 consecutive days. It is nice to have some rest out here in our musical wilderness. As you will learn in greater detail in this very episode, I am disabled with tinnitus, which is a persistent, always uncomfortable, often painful ringing in my ears. It has caused me severe hearing loss, 
and created a complicated relationship with one of my greatest passions, music. What I can say with great certainty is that I am grateful for Matastrophic Music, which allows me to bring you, O oh faithful camper, plenty of four-track F-stacks for musical consumption, and to share my joy with Duffy, who loves and appreciates the wide spectrum of rock and roll music as much as I do. Let's get to the episode. Welcome campers, you are tuned in to the new podcast called Metastrophic Music, a show where we talk about music and marshmallows in an attempt to turn you the listener as well as us the hosts onto some great new tunes and artists. So gather close around the fire and don't forget your hot tea or cocktail. It's time to get into it with your hosts, the Mats, Kelly, and Duffy. I like the addition of marshmallows. What'd you bring to the campfire today? So I have a little um, concert experience to tell you about today. Ooh. I went to, and I'll say in air quotes, I think that's how you do it. I went to a concert in my living room. I uh, bought a ticket for a live streaming event for the band Avatar. Yeah, this this was super cool. They've done this before in a way. Okay, so this was actually a concert. It was in... They, they played at this venue in California, and they live streamed the real concert. Um, so they did something kind of similar. Um, they did a live stream show before. Uh, it was maybe like a year ago that I also you know, bought a ticket for it and watched. But that was, there was no, like, live audience. Mm -hmm. It was, they played through all of their records, actually. So I think it was, like, three or four different nights. And they did, like, two records per night. Oh. That was super cool, man. They, um, it was, like, all set up you know the stage they had different stages different backgrounds it was like you know theatrical so yeah that was like a year ago like i said no audience but this time the the show i saw last night was a real live show and man it was awesome it was so cool The band Avatar, they're just incredible live. And it's awesome to see that they're now at this point in their career where they're the headliner when they come to the U.S. Oh, So they have their own, yeah, they have their own headlining show tours that they're doing now over here in the U.S. because they're from Sweden. But yeah, incredible metal band. The show last night, dude, oh, the set list was perfect, I think. They played, you know, some of the hits, but they also played, like, some deep dive stuff, like, kind of similar to stuff we would dig up on catastrophic music. Yeah, there was, like, they were pulling some songs out, dude, that were just, like, I was shocked. I was like, what? I'm like, they're playing this? They're playing this one? (laughs) Yeah, it was a really good time. Oh, and the show lasted for two hours. Oh, nice. I thought that was super cool, yeah. I mean, you would expect if you go to a concert that the headline headlining band would play for that long. Yeah. But these days, I feel like it's not really that common. I feel like even being the headliner, sometimes you only get like an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. And a lot of them, too, depending on where they play, have like hard limits on when they can, you know, have to cut off as far as like being out there festivals for instance depending on where it's located yeah. I know I've been to festivals where bands were cut off on stage and certain responses were made to that depending on what the artist is artists used to his advantage or get really angry you yeah. know you've seen both and yeah it's nice to see like because it's just a full experience two hours is a good full music experience in my opinion. Yeah, and and they put... I mean, they always are kind of theatrical when they play, but they did, like, the singer, Johannes, 
he did a song on a baby grand piano, um, just him. So he played the piano. They also did, uh, they have this song called Tower, where he plays trombone, and he broke out oh. the trombone, and he actually pl- played it in the song. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was awesome, dude. I, uh, I, I'm able to watch it until, like, through the weekend still, re- like, rewatch it. Oh, that's cool. They unlocked that for, for multiple days. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking I might go back and rewatch it. One of my favorite bands, dude. Yeah, one of my favorites. How was the? How did you feel the actual like concert going experience was for you, knowing that like this was happening live and you're in your living room just chilling? Was that was that cool? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. I mean, I I know I would personally now at my advancing age, by the campfire as I sit here with you know a bad back and. <laughs> The whole reason for the today's episode my thought is like that experience still kind of being there is cool yeah it was a 15 dollar ticket which like i'll pay 15 dollars every week to see a band live like that i think i think this is something that more bands should do because i mean in today's world this is how bands really make their money is by the live show right. you know like we all we all know about like the streaming services, how little they pay the artists and how, yeah. you know, people don't really buy the physical albums anymore as much. And, you know, so this is where bands make their money. And I think, you know, you're still going to sell out. If you're a good band, you're still going to sell out your show, like in a, a medium sized club or whatever, you know, so go ahead and sell out the venue and also stream it for people around the country around the world you know who want to be there me <laughs> me it's like yeah. you're talking directly <laughs> you're telling me this and then my head is like i would have loved to have been at that red hot chili peppers concert with you just watching in yeah. my living room i would have cranked it up and just you know did the best i could you know also yeah i mean it's just not physically possible for me to be at a, at a concert really so to have even have like uh, what some would say is reduced, but to me it sounds better than nothing. So I'm going to take that glass half full approach to it and be like, "Hey, yeah, uh, we could have had an episode where we talked about that whole concert, you know, track by track." But it's like bands got to get on that though. It's it's the technology is we know just from producing this podcast how much of a hindrance technology can be, but also how much of a blessing. And if you have the money right. to overcome this hurdle then you should allow the listeners an opportunity to support you. Dude, I would literally spend, yeah, I would spend every every single Friday, Saturday night watching concerts like this if it was, if I was able to. Right, completely, you know, just sitting by this campfire and spitballing. We could totally do that. That could be something that we could do where it's like, I can watch and still experience, oh, especially yeah. these bands that are, like you said, you're describing this theatrical performance and... Right. I feel like the, it, yeah. we're, we're, we've reached that point where it's you can open this door and have a whole other new source of revenue. Since we're we're having another one of those episodes where we're just kind of being a little loosey-goosey, my favorite. Next year is the 50th anniversary of Rush, and I'm hoping that perhaps... Alex and Getty get together and do something, some sort of celebration for that. That would be something like, I'm sure the ticket prices would be ridiculous and who knows where it would be if they even do it. But I'm I'm still putting it out there into the universe. That that would be like the one, the one other than perhaps, you know, King Buffalo that I would be like, I got to go to that. I just really want to be a part of that experience. I feel like it would be very cathartic and yeah, uh, oh, I saw somebody snuck up to the campfire. Hear that? You know, that's <laughs> funny because you, you can't hear it, but my little girl's barking in the background because it's dinner time. Oh, somebody didn't like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, boy. She's, going, <laughs> she's going full crazy. You know what? I brought to the fire today an album called yes what did you bring so many other realities exist simultaneously by atmosphere also that's an awesome title song of the week 
I'm going to lead with it. Oh, wow. It's, it's two songs because that's all I could listen to yesterday. And these are the two songs. Dotted lines in my head. It was like my just the biggest grin on my face as I'm listening to these songs. Now I finally found that after two weeks of struggling, which leads us into this campfire, which is not. We didn't come here with stacks today. It's related to music. It is about tinnitus. Yeah. The fact that I have it. And how it has affected the creation of the podcast. Didn't really know how I wanted this conversation to go. And still, even right now, it feels like I'm out on a tightrope without a safety net at all. From the get-go, it's like, I don't really want to have this conversation. I wish that this wasn't happening to me. I wish that I wasn't dealing with it. But it's gotten in front of me to the point of I have to, to address it. Because it does affect my ability to listen to music and how much I can listen to it. I want to be honest and open in my discussion of it here today, but then also not talk about it anymore, if that's possible. <laughs> you know, really put it out there that this is not not going to be my subject of reference yeah. in conversation. If I can avoid it, like uh, people, you know, this is a public, you know, we're producing this for for any camper to come up and listen to. So I will always point to it and kind of hopefully just get through today and and move on and only have it be addressed when I feel comfortable. When I do have to give it attention, I want it to be on my own terms because <laughs> it's already dictated so many other terms in my life. I refuse to bow to any more. Yeah, well, you know, you said that you feel like you're on a tightrope without a safety net, but dude... That rope is only about a foot off the ground, so, you know, don't worry. There's somebody who's very pro-therapy. You know, I've received tools in therapy that allow me, to, you know, to this day, to adapt to situations that can feel really overwhelming. You know, I'm looking at my notes, and I kind of went through my whole life's history of, like, health struggles, and tinnitus was something. And this, this is the one that specifically pertains to this episode now i'm speaking only for myself only for my own personal experience i'm not being for anybody else who has tinnitus hearing issues so it it it's one of those things where i would rather be just talking about tom petty right now which is kind of what led up to this conversation it's hard because we come off of an episode where i introduce yeah, I introduced Duffy to my favorite band, King Buffalo. We're on a high. <laughs> I listened to a lot of that going into it, which is really excited, and he liked it. And it was like, okay, this is great. This is, you know, celebrating a big victory that we just had together, you know? I'm listening to Tom Petty, and listening, I got like 60 songs to narrow down, and I'm at the park. I'm listening, and <laughs> the first song, I'm like, at max volume, with my headphones on at the park. It sounds like the equivalent of what 75% volume was a day earlier. <laughs> I'm like, first, my first thought is like, oh, don't panic. You probably just blew out another set of headphones. And I've gone through, I don't know, 20 pairs in the last 15 years. I don't know. I don't, I don't have that exact number. A lot of it running, you know, every day I would have some form of something going. It started off with music and then it, it turned into audiobooks and pot and then eventually podcasts but it's still a lot of like listening every day so i get through some some listening with the, the petty until it's just the point where it's like this is too painful like can't really force my way through this and i'm like oh boy so i go home and i try a different pair it's the same thing okay so this is not the this is not a hardware issue you stepped a little too far into it and uh paid the consequence for it so immediately, like, I've been dealing with this issue for my first mention of it in a journal was 2012, so a year into my running, and I was using, not telling anybody what to do, but I really regret using earbuds, the little ones that you put in your ear, said if I could go back and change just that, just that one thing, you know, lots of loud music with those, I feel like really sped it up. A lot of it is my concert history, you know, a lot of concerts and Oh yeah. 
I had issues with ear infections when I was a kid. I mean, this whole experience is just exhausting. Anybody with tinnitus who's had it for a while, and, and you know, I've had multiple, multiple audiograms, seen multiple audiologists, I've seen multiple ENTs. It sucks. Like, the whole process is with hearing aids that I have beef over. My personal experience with it is that it's a lot, a lot of money, a lot of commitment. And there is literally no help for that. If you want to say that having hearing aids available in an over-the-counter measure is all you're willing to do and call it a day, then you suck at your job. That does not even address the issues that I have. And I need hearing aids. I needed hearing aids in 2016 when I first visited an ENT. At no point in time have I been able to feasibly afford the actual hearing aid and the process that goes into maintaining it. Because with tinnitus, it's needed as also a masking agent, so it's a lot of fine-tuning, right? Right, you said it's like it has to match frequencies that you're missing, something like that? Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's uh, the whole, like, the hearing aid thing, I mean, unfortunately, it's like just one more problem on the list of a million with our american healthcare system you know right really what a huge blow was to my creative life initially in the first like instance it was like man music and music and writing are like holding hands to me i do those together naturally and it made benefits and it's, i just i have so much fun you know that's all i really yeah. at the end of the day it's like try to get what you can out of this life because it's going to take what it's going to take from you and you Oftentimes, don't even get much of a say in it, like barely, you know? Yeah, I would say you're an extremely passionate, like, enjoy, I don't know the word is enjoyer, <laughs> enjoyer of the arts and all. Like, yeah. you're, you, you are so tuned in to everything creative and, you know, mu music. I thought I was a big music person, you know? I have played in bands you know since i was young teenager but man dude like when when you and i came together with our our friendship our relationship over the last you know few years just like the amount of music that you have consumed uh, like on a daily basis and in such depth and like the knowledge that you have of, of all of this it like really like I was kind of blown away, like, wow, I thought I liked music, you know? <laughs> I've been kind of, like, obsessed with it. And it's it's nice to have an outlet now where I feel comfortable just talking about it and having somebody that, that shares that passion for discovery, you know? There's, there's nothing beats that when you just hear that, that song that just grabs you. Here I was a week ago, like, couldn't even imagine, like, well, how am I going to write? What am I going to do? I'm going to have to like reprogram all of that. And my first thought, thankfully, is to try to focus on things that I'm grateful for. And I know that sounds cheesy to some people, but you have to use every tool available to you when a physical ailment, I guess, is completely pulling you out of your reality. Like you can go through your day and you just feel fine and you live your life and you might have aches and pains that are infrequent everybody has that and then you have a persistent physical discomfort from like the moment you wake up so i can't even say to the moment i go to bed because i've woken up multiple times especially recently it's like it's hard to stay asleep you wake up and it's just like ringing in your ears like so you've just gone to a rock show you have to trick your brain into not focusing on that really just try to put my energy into positive things and that I enjoy and I love art and music and I was worried that I would not be able to handle music in my life this is going to be almost too difficult for me because I constantly talk about it and I can't really listen to it the way that I wanted to the way that I had been doing and it's just going to be more frustration and, and anger and I did not want to become bitter with this. I'm just not that type of person. I'm thankful that I'm not that type of person. 
I have all these bands that I've been listening to all my life, and the whole point is just, you know, sharing stacks. It's like, I don't need to listen to 600 Tom Petty songs. Right. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. I mean, that's pretty close to, like, just a ridiculous amount with the live albums and all the anthologies and box sets and just overwhelm myself because it's fun. I enjoy listening to as much music as I can, but, you know, I've hit the wall. I have to start taking precautions to preserve the hearing that I have now so I can do the things that I want to be doing. It's talking to you and hearing my family and things like that. It's already affecting things like my balance, you know, and uh, I've been dealing with this for enough time where it's a, the, the know the responses to this sort of thing and how to handle it. And I feel like that is paid off. And I owe a lot of that to uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, trying to emulate having a sense of humor about it or rather not lose the one i have to tinnitus along with the hearing knowing that that could very easily be you know one of the first things that go when you're miserable is mm, right. that i like making people laugh i like hearing other you know hearing other people that make me laugh you make me laugh you know so i want to be able to have those experiences as well and i still have them so i don't really need to be yeah super pouty about it you know i was just excited to get to this episode to talk about like how things are really not going to change yeah i mean basically our our approach is going to change a little bit but for the listeners it's it's not really going to change it's just to to let the listener know um we you and i we've been putting in so much work on what we call homework for these episodes which is just listening to every single piece of music that these bands have ever put out you know we're, we're consuming so much in order to you know build our stacks and to try to give the listener what we consider to be like the most genuine authentic stacks and experience that we can yeah that that's gonna change a little bit for us because you know, with your tinnitus, I mean, it's just, you, you can't, you can't listen to, like you said, uh, 600 yeah. Tom Petty songs or, no. or whatever, but the, the show is going to go on and we're going to do things a little bit differently on our end, but this isn't going away. You know, we're still going to be doing catastrophic music. In fact, I, I think things might get better you know all the ideas and and what we've been planning and talking about moving forward i mean this seems like a good thing you know to tweak our recipe a little bit to bring the listeners something even better than what we've done so far right i mean the stack format stays and we've just kind of expanded on it tweaked it and it's one of those things where we like to mix things up a little bit, you know, we yeah. embrace the weird, we embrace the cosmic. I'm mean, as long as we're both having fun, we'll be we'll be doing this. And if anybody is curious about tinnitus and they want to watch something this is a really good <laughs> horror movie in my opinion, this is The Sound of Metal. Check that movie out about the drummer that loses his hearing because I, that scared me. Maybe more than any horror movie that it's done in a long time. It is grilled home like how it can just completely go on you. You know, for the listeners, you know, everybody, I mean, people everywhere are dealing with stuff that, you know, isn't visible on the outside. Yes. You know, we all need to have compassion and empathy for others and be, like, kind, <laughs> Because our mental health and our mental well-being is up there on the list of just about the most important things we have, you know. Absolutely. Because like you were saying, you know, you live with this all day, every day, but you're determined to stay positive, you know. You don't want to let this change who you are, change your character, that's strong will, man. That's like, you know, not willing to go down without a fight. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just so important. That's It's so valuable. So important. Again, reiterate, pro therapy, there's help out there. 
if you ever feel completely alone, know that you don't have to, that there are means out there for you to find help. Yeah. Especially with this specifically, like seek help if it becomes overwhelming for you. You know, we had discussed the music community alone. I mean, tinnitus would, I imagine, be pretty frequent ailment among people alone, you know, allowed music for a lot of their life. Right. Professional musicians, yeah, sound people, professional, you know, people who work at venues. It's just upsetting that it's like the, the, the hearing loss is associated with elderly and the hearing aid market is predatory on that. It's things haven't changed. I don't feel like it, it is a priority for most people until it is directly in their life. Unfortunately, I feel like it's going to be in a lot of people's lives as they put loud noises in their heads. I feel like it's the modern society is designed around that. I mean, I walk around and I see like young people, especially AirPods in the ears, like everybody. Definitely got one last thing. So what's your song of the week? Yeah, man, let's close this out with my song of the week which is oh so i mentioned to you prior to taping our episode here that i kind of dove into some other bands outside Mm -hmm. of our homework for a a future episode this was this song is from a band that i dug deeper into and kind of reacquainted myself with and kind of like re-fell in love with this band again so the band is Eight Stop Seven. Have you ever heard of this band? I don't think so. Yeah, it's number eight stops number seven is how it's spelled. Yep, and the song is called Question Everything. This is off from the record In Moderation. This band was formed in 1996, and I believe this record came out in 99. Yeah, and so back when this came out, I bought the CD, I still own the CD, and I really liked it, and I still really like it. It's a great rock record. It was a band that, man, they should have been popular. They should have, like, had so much more success. They had a couple songs that were on the radio and I think in some video games. Oh, they never like really got big. They never caught on, I guess. And they kind of just faded away. So I never bothered to dig deeper into this band because back then, you know, everything was CDs. And if you didn't go out and purchase the CD by the band, you, you know, you didn't hear their music. (laughs) You know, you kind of, you had to physically, you know, purchase uh, records and CDs back then to hear stuff. So I just, you know, I never found my way to any of that. And anyway, this band popped into my mind for whatever reason this past week. And so I decided, hey, I'm going to go listen to the stuff that is out there that I've never heard before. And dude, I was like blown away by the last record they put out. Uh, it was in 2012, I believe. And it's called Fables. Mm-hmm. And dude, that record is so good. I listened to it and I'm like, man, <laughs> like I already said, this band oh, should wow. have had so much more. They should have had so much more success, dude. So yeah, my song of the week is called Question Everything. And it's from, I believe, their second record, In Moderation. It's a song about, as far as I can tell, about a father who's on his deathbed or near the end of his life. And he's asking for his son's forgiveness. The son ultimately does forgive his father for, you know, I guess not really recognizing him in the right way while he was a child. Like, not understanding that his son was a child and expecting more out of him than uh, should be expected. And so he ultimately, I guess, does forgive his father in this song. And it sounds like, it sounds way heavy, just me explaining it. But it's actually, it's like, you got to hear it. It's a good, it's a good rock song. It's got a great melody, great chord structure. Yeah, dude. It's quality. (laughs) Quality. That's it. That's all I got.
<laughs> Until next time, campers. Eat your spinach. Stay cosmic, ride that rainbow, and tune in for the next Matastrophic Music, because we'll be here. We will be here. Always at the campfire. Good night. <laughs> Always. Thank you.